Hi, and welcome to Ticket to Life. I am Henry, and if this is your first time listening, thank you for tuning in. And if this is your hundredth time of listening, thank you for coming back. But anyway, uh, this is Ticket to Life, and if this is your first time, welcome. And on this podcast, we talk about anything and everything in life. And I mean anything. It could be something you could have cared less or you thought you cared less about. And then you hear it on this and you're like, oh, I didn't know I cared about that. But anyway, we talk about, when I say we, I mean me. Uh, I talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly sometimes. Sometimes I may say something that may offend you. And I apologize ahead of time because sometimes I just spew. Ask anyone who's listened to this podcast and sometimes I just ramble. And I go, I'm giving you a heads up. I go from one topic to the other and then go back to the main topic. But um, anyway, thank you again so much. Um, Today we're going to be talking about the different generations and how things have just changed so totally much, so, so much. Um, People get bored easy. Now we get bored easy. So what do we do? We pick up our phone. Ah. And you will find out, I love my iPhone, but I am not a fan of iPhones. (laughs) What? Does that make sense? Well, I just love having that technology in my hand. I always say it's like I have a tiny computer in my hand. And unfortunately, this is not good. Uh, Not for me or anyone. I mean, some people are losing their social skills. And I know you say, oh, no, I talk to everyone. No, some people don't. Not, I'm not pointing anyone out, but some people literally don't know how to socialize anymore. It's just very interesting how things have changed. Um, But I try not to get bored. I myself try not to get bored. But a lot of people are bored, so what do they do? They pick up their phone. Uh, Small kids are now saying, I'm bored. Uh, I've even heard my grandkids say, I'm bored. Well, my thing is, go find something to do, because there's always something to do. Uh, being a baby boomer, um, and for those of you who do not know what a baby boomer is, uh, those are any, that's anyone who was born between 1946 and 1964 or some other stats that I found or 1955 through 1965. But anyway, so yes, I'm a baby boomer. I'm 66 in case you're wondering. She sounds so young. How could she be that old? <laughs> We let ourselves get old. You will get old. But anyway, and kids are getting bored now. And kids are getting phones, uh, iPhones and Androids at such a young age. Because that's, for some, I'm not saying all parents, but that is their babysitter. Um, so, and I, and I feel horrible because it is a sad thing. And uh, to be a baby boomer, more than likely someone you know and love, such as your grandparents or mom and dad, were baby boomers. And during this, what I, again, the age of the years were 1955 to 1965, but then it's changed. And I know that sounds like, whoa, that's so long, long ago. And no, there were not dinosaurs at that time. But I remember my dad was born in 1928, and he has passed, and my mom, 1930. And you just think, I remember thinking, gosh, that was so long ago. So let me put it this way. 1957 doesn't sound that long ago. But again, fortunately, a lot of the baby boomers are realizing, um, and we're all trying to stay healthy and keep up with technology. Now, I shouldn't say we because I do try to take care of myself, but sometimes I I fail. (laughs) But I do take care of myself. It's not like I'm, you know, eating chocolate 24-7, but I probably could eat chocolate 24-7. But I I do know that I do try to stay up to date with technology. Uh, I can figure things out, and if not... I have my kids, and thank God that I can ask either of my kids, and they will walk me through it, and they are patient. So I'm hoping that I was patient with them, but I'm not too sure if I was a patient parent. But anyway, um, baby boomers are people who, who, this is a description, okay? Baby boomers, and this is not my, well, I guess this is kind of my opinion because I fit in and some of those things. Yeah, that's me. Uh, Baby boomers 
were people who valued relationships. Because I value a relationship, be it with a family, with my husband, uh, friends. And some people really don't value those things anymore. They just don't. And, and the goal is to be active now for baby boomers or self-assurance. They enjoyed working, and I did enjoy working. Oh, I did love working, and now this is my job, my hobby, uh, podcasting. And uh, but no, I'm not getting paid for it. <laughs> Booze. Anyone want to sponsor Ticket to Life? <laughs> but anyway, um, anyway, uh, it is it's something we did value. We knew that we had to work hard. Yes, there were bums around that people just were lazy and didn't want to go, just like there are bums now that don't want to work. So I'm just saying. Um, we were hard workers, and if some of us choose to continue to work, um, I was a stay-at-home mom. I worked part-time, then I went full-time. Uh, then my husband was in law enforcement for 34 years. And then finally, we decided, okay, it's time. It's time for us to do something else other than this. And it was hard at first because we were so used to working. That's why you really need to find a job that you love. It's so important to find a job that you love. And if you don't love your just job, don't just quit. Find something before you quit. Uh, but it is so important to love what you do. It, to me, that is such an important thing to do. And we have changed. I mean, if you look back, I say <laughs> you young people, uh, if you look back at what people y used to look like, I probably, at, at, si at 66, let's say 30 years ago, 40 years ago, I would be with a walker and a cane and walking slow. But I feel that and yes, there are some people my age that unfortunately are having to do that. But there are so many more people who are aware of their health. And I think that's great. So if you can get up and walk, I'm trying, I'm trying. <laughs> move. That's the, that's the thing. Just move. Um, and it's so stinking important for us to be able to do that. And for not just my people, my age, it's all ages, get up and move and get away from the technology. Now, back to those who choose to continue to work because they love working. And if they are having a hard time fitting in, some are, some are, not all, but some um, baby boomers are still working because they choose to and they love to work. So I'm asking all you millennials, Gen X, Gen Z, What's another one? Uh, Gen Alpha. I didn't know there were so many. Uh, if you work with someone who's a little older or much older than you, please be kind, be understanding, help them out, and don't make jokes. And don't give them a hard time. Because one day, guess what? You will be our age. God willing, you will be our age. So as far as being bored, we find things to do. I told my granddaughter that when you are bored, find something to do. Trust me, there's always something to do. Even a task that you don't want to do or something that you think you wanted to do. Start a craft op project that you bought five years ago. And yes, I have one that's probably even older than in my closet that I've never done. <laughs> At least you can start and just find something. Put the phone down. It's good for your brain. It's good for you. Uh, you know, read. Do a, I know this sounds really old of me, but do a crossword. Do a puzzle, a jigsaw puzzle. I don't care if it's just a hundred piece. Do something. And do this with your kids because kids and their technology, we need to take that away from them to a certain degree. Although I do know that they need it now. Um, now, um, I, I would like at my age... I will always find something to do. So I will. I will always find something to do. Now, my poor husband, if he looks for a minute like he's bored, I will always ask him, do you need something to do? And he looks at me and immediately says, no, no, I'm good. And he, 
He, he will find something to do. I don't know why my husband puts up with me. He must really love me because <laughs> he keeps me around, and I'm very thankful, and I love him very much. Now, let's go on to the Gen X. Now, don't be impressed and say, wow, she's on top of things because I'm not. And again, we just change. I have to tell you, you, you might hear paper rattling, old school notes. And it's funny because I'm on my third year of this podcast and I kind of heard, I never hear my podcasts again after I record them and edit them. I'm done. Uh, but I did hear a little bit of the very first one, allow me to introduce myself. Oh my gosh, was I a nervous wreck? I mean, I am, well, I'm rambling now, but I was really rambling in that one. And I kept saying, and I don't even have a script. I don't even have a script. I think I said it two or three times. It's like, um, because I didn't, but I definitely have learned through the years that when you're podcasting, you need to have a script. You need to have some notes. You need to have something. Um, so anyway, I'm sure you all wanted to know that. But anyway, so again, don't be too impressed. I had to look up all the different uh, types of generation names uh, because I wasn't even sure about them. All I knew was I was a baby boomer. That's all I knew. So anyway, and this is so different to read these. And no, I obviously don't read a script, but I do have lots of notes. I have one in front of me, but just sometimes. Anyway. I'm sure you don't care about that. But anyway, so anyway, next is um, Gen X, Generation X. Just in case you're not familiar with this age category, it's 1965 to 1980. What I found out that this generation is very resourceful, independent, well-maintaining balance, well-educated, and values respect of knowledge and sometimes called the middle child. <laughs> they are laid back and very stressed out. Hmm. I'm thinking they know that being bored is a waste of time. I know that sounds crazy, but I really do. I think that they, that's why they are stressed out. Maybe I don't know. Maybe they have. And of course I did not make this up. You can Google it. I Google everything. And if you, when I'm say Google it, I will refer to Google as Google it because I tell people go Google it anyway. So, uh, maybe I should have been born during this time. I'm not sure. I don't think I had a choice, though. Um, so the next one are the millennials in 1980, 1994. Um, and if I offend anyone, I need to apologize to you now. But they are very influential in the workplace or social media. Not all of them. Some people could care less about social media. And good for you. Uh, they, for the most part, are very confident with technology and cautious about their personal data which everyone should be very cautious about their personal data. You know, those scammers are out there. You, if I have any scammers listening, we're on to you. Now, I will say that it doesn't matter when you were born that some people will put their whole life out there for the whole world to see. And that, in my opinion, is not a good idea or unsafe. That's the baby boomer being a mom, and that's coming out in me because you need to be cautious what you put out there. Because once it's out there, folks, it's out there. Now, I'm thinking that many of the young adults are into technology, have truly forgotten how to socialize. But this is this is my opinion with real life people. Now, not all millennials, but I know of some who live on social media. And this is baby boomers, too. Oh, Lordy. I mean, especially people my age. There's, you know, it was for college kids and we took over. But anyway, um, Facebook is crazy with, yeah, people who just need someone to talk to. Uh, but anyway, uh, I believe that uh, it's easier to converse on social media or messages or um, messenger. It just is. You don't have to see people. You don't have to say it to their face. But it can, some people can become very anxious when they're confronted with people because they're not used to it. And again, not everyone, just some. And unfortunately, they are missing out, making up excuses not to get together because they're sick or their pet is sick. Their partner has something that day or even I have to wash my hair. Yeah, that that's one I've heard. Uh, it's, but it's part of my routine. I always wash it on Saturday. Okay. I know this sounds crazy. But that's what some people will do. They will come up with a 
excuse just not to be around people. And I think that's kind of sad. And I hope that's not because of technology, but I would say that I think it has a little part of it. And now, ta-da, we still have two more. We have Gen X and that, I'm, I'm sorry, excuse me, Gen Z, uh, 1995. And that's through 1995 through 2012. Now, Gen Z is the de- tech savvy. Savvy? Per- Aggressive, inquisitive, and socially acceptable. I didn't say they had to go out and socialize, but they will accept um, anyone, as we all should. So that's that's a good trait. Um, well, at least most of them are acceptable. And really flexible, and they believe in authenticity. And now these are really good traits regarding all. Now, if we could get a little bit of baby boomers, uh, Gen X and the millennials and Gen Z and Gen Alpha. I haven't done Gen Alpha yet, but I'm getting there. If we could do a little bit of those and put them together, we would be amazing. All the good traits. (laughs) Now, these are the, um, for some of you that don't know, I've already mentioned about some of these traits. This this is, again, I don't know where it came from. Who decided to start labeling? And that's another thing. People need to be labeled nowadays. I'm not sure why, but you have to have a label. You have to have this or that. So we are on our very last one, and that is Gen Alpha. This it was kind of um, unsure of this about this one. It was 2010 to... 2020, then I found 2010 to 2025. So um, you pick whatever year, whichever one you like. Uh, but anyway, anyway it's uh, Gen Alpha. Now, be impressed because they are fully, fully living in a digital world. We have AI now. We have... Uh, voice. I mean, I talk to my phone and I can say whatever I need to send a text. I mean, it's the easiest thing. And Gen Alpha is definitely, definitely connected with technology. They're very independent. And they would prefer to watch videos in a format opposed to, you know, picking up a book. Okay, read this and, uh, They would prefer videos, which I think nowadays I would on something like that because when you work for a school district, usually you have to go over all the tasks. I don't know if they still do that. Maybe not. But, um, And they are all, not all of them, social media. That's that's their social time. And many will spend, unfortunately, this this is sad, but many uh, will spend their childhood without a biological parent. And that is sad. And again, uh, the phone, our iPhone, our iPads, our Androids, our whatever. I mean, TV, oh my gosh, there's so much TV out there now. So much. So many shows, so many. And that's why it is so important for parents to monitor what their kids are watching. It is so stinking important. Because they are our future. Now, these kids lived through COVID, through a a pandemic. And that, I will tell you, did a number on some kids. Kids that may have been in daycare, kids that may have been um, in, in school. That did a number. Now, I will tell you, my oldest granddaughter, who is now five, she was one, yeah, when the pandemic began. So, of course, you know, we're all staying in our houses. My daughter would do drive-bys, and we'd wave from a distance. You know, we were abiding by the rules, and uh, it was really hard. So once all that kind of changed and lifted, we were still wearing our mask, uh, we went to the drugstore. My daughter and I, we had our mask, we had our antibacteria, and we went into the drugstore, and my granddaughter was two, so that would have been 20, 21, and she was two, and we were walking around. She'd never really been in a store, 
because she that what she remembered because she was a baby when this hit. And so when we went into the store, you know, she was really good. I said, don't touch anything, you know, typical thing. And then I saw her staring at this young woman. Okay, my daughter's a brunette. I'm gray. Uh, my my son has dark hair. She never really, and well, my daughter-in-law is, I take that back, my daughter-in-law, she is a blonde. Um, but she had never seen a blonde before, other than like in books or on TV. And she didn't really watch TV that much uh, at all. And she just stood there and stared at her. <laughs> I mean, literally just stared. And I'm like, honey, stop, stop staring. No, no, you know, don't look, blah, blah, blah. It's not nice to stare. Anyway, this young lady turned around and looked at me. And I said, I am so sorry. I said, we have been locked in for over a year, it seems like. And she, and I said, she's just amazed at, I guess, another human being. I don't think I said that. I said, at, at seeing you. And she looked at me and she goes, oh, my gosh, how old is she? I said, oh, she's about two and a half. And she said, my son is two and a half and he does not even know what to do when I take him out. Now, if this affected toddlers, what did it do to these poor, poor kids, the gen alphas? What happened to them? What? What is? Well, they were taken out of school. They were taken out of their social, uh, and for them that was it. You know, school, going to school every day. Yeah, they did it online and stuff. Not the same. We all know that's not the same. When my daughter moved to Kansas, everyone's like, "Well, you can FaceTime." Not the same. I don't care. It's great as him, but it's not the same. So you try really need to make that effort to understand what those kids went through during this time. Yeah, they may have had technology out of the wazoo, but it wasn't human contact. And I will tell you, we all need human contact. One sort of a way, I don't care if you're a loner. That's great if that's what make you makes you happy. That's wonderful. But everyone needs some sort of human communication, uh, it's, it's just, it's funny how we have all changed. And again, if we could take a little bit of the, the baby boomer and take a little Gen X and a little millennial, little Gen Z and a little, uh, the Gen Alpha, it would be amazing to have those values, to know the technology, to socially be confident to be, have that work balance, to be respectful of knowledge. And I'm not saying that we don't all have these traits of a little bit, but if we could partake and just grab a little piece here for ourselves and change, oh man, that would be amazing. But some people just get so stuck in their ways. They don't want to learn the technology. They don't want to learn new things. So I, I, it was funny because, you know, I think I have mentioned my husband and I are listening to Bible in a year, Father Mike Schmidt. And um, he, he made a comment and he said, it's funny when we say thank you. What do you say? When, this is what I was brought up to say. And most people were. You say thank you. People say you're welcome. Well, don't quote me. I'm just and don't quote him. I'm just because he was thinking it was either Gen Z or Gen Alpha. He wasn't sure. But now when people say thank you, they say no problem. I thought, well, okay, that's that's okay. But you're welcome. Just sounds so much nicer to me. And then he also said in Australia they say no worries when you say thank you. No worries. I don't know. I'll have to ask my. Uh, brother and sister-in-law, if that's what they say, because I'm not sure if that's what they say when people say thank you. But he did make a comment, and, and I thought it was funny, because he said when people say thank you, and they said, what's well, the least I could do? Is that the least? You're just giving me your least? <laughs> Couldn't you give me more? Because we always want more. You know that. <laughs>
even though we shouldn't. But anyway, I think where I'm getting at with all of this is that we are all different. We all come from different generations. But guess what? Deep down inside. Oh, sorry about that. Just hit the mic. Um, we are we are all still human. We will always make mistakes. We will get up in the morning and hope for a new day. We will hopefully learn things. But sometimes you can learn from these younger children, young adults. But yet, you young children and young adults can learn from the wiser and older adults. So you can, you know, just be kind. That's that's the thing for me. I think if people could just be accepting of one another, no matter where you come from, what you believe in. Well, I don't want to be kind to anyone who does bad things. But anyway, if we can just be kind and do accept people. I mean, people that do bad things, they're doing it for a reason. There's, there's it's... You know, there's that person that you always know that they just went down that wide path opposed to the narrow path. But you wonder why. People who are miserable and sad, something's causing it. You just don't wake up one morning and think, oh, I'm just miserable and sad. And those are the people we need to pray for. We need to, you know, Make a special effort to be there for someone like that. And if you know someone like that, again, be there for them. It does not cost you a thing to be kind. So, just to let you know, if you are a baby boomer, a Gen Z, a millennial, a Gen X, or a Gen Alpha, I will be praying for you. I will be thinking of you. And just be kind. That is one thing we all have in common. We can be kind to one another. No matter what the age, no matter who, how you were raised, you can be kind because we all have kindness in our heart. So this is Henry. And until next week, I hope you can find your blessings because you are one of my blessings. And I'll be thanking of you. I will be praying for you. And I will see you next week on Ticket to Life. Until then, take care.